Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I'm Devin. And today we're going through a list, a particular list of 10 games we would keep if we could only keep 10 games. Mmm. You prepped for this, right? I did. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Alexa, now recording. I was actually wondering because I was like, I don't see the red light in the hallway and... Alexa, turn on spotlight. Okay, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad my instincts were right. I was like, it doesn't look like it's recording. Right, you ready Five, to start again? Four, three. Hey, I'm Alex Radical from Board Game Co. And I'm Devin. And today we're going through a list of ten games we would keep if we could only keep ten games. Only ten? Only ten. There's, like, any extras? No. What Just are the ten. rules? Actually, I have eleven. <laughs> Do you actually have eleven? <laughs> You can break the rules off. Well, I have, I have I have caveats, I have explanations. So to begin with, to begin with, this is a list of ten. It's games. unlike you to be the rule breaker. Well, I broke the rules, and so I added an extra game because I broke the rules. One of my games shouldn't arguably count, and so I was like, well, then add eleventh. So just in case, you know, so I broke the rules twice to make up for it. Two wrongs make a right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is basically Have you already games. done this list before? Yes, I have. Good good point. I have done this list before. Why are we doing it again? Because people didn't like the first list. <laughs> it's not entirely true. Some people liked it. Some people were like, well, yeah, no, duh. Basically, this is a list of 10 games if I can only keep 10 games. The idea being that the 10 games you would keep if you only keep 10 games are not the same, or at least <clears> not for me, the same as my top 10 games of all time. Mm. In fact, they're drastically different. I have it. Mine are pretty different. And the reason for Ish. that is a fewfold. Uh, first of all is that if you can only keep 10 games, then I want to have a variety of experiences at the table. and I don't care if my top 10 games of all time are all area control games. doesn't bother me. 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. might have other types of games. In this case, that's not the case. So that's first of all is the variety of experiences. Mm. Secondly is the consistency of what I believe will hold up over time. So just to give you one example, Lost Rooms of Arnak is one of my favorite games. But I'm not confident that if I could only keep 10 games, yeah. would I play that 50 times? Would it give me the, the variety that <clears> I want from an experience over enough plays? I'm sure. not confident. And this brings us to the third point, which is the last time I did this list. I did <laughs> 10 games, if I could only keep, keep 10 games, and I basically chose games that have a bajillion amounts of content thanks to all the expansions. Oh. And I'm going to tell you those 10 games in a second, just in case you can I guess some of them? In a second. Let's we'll <clears> just give them some caveat. And so the problem is, some people pointed out in the comments, lots of people enjoyed the video, it was great, etc., all that stuff, but a bunch of people mm. pointed out in the comments that, hey, congratulations, freaking relations, you can only keep 10 games, and it's around $2,500 worth of games. <laughs> if... If not more, just to be clear, if not more. And so I was like, that's a fair point. Let's redo this list. Let's add somebody else so we have a diversity of opinions and okay. RPGs. Okay. And then secondly... <laughs> and then secondly, uh, so that I could redo my list, and this time it's only mm. base games. This is only base games, no expansions, no apps, no mods, base games only, whatever's in the base game is in the base game, use your imagination, stack the pieces, play whatever games you want to play with them, but there are no expansions allowed at the table. No and with that, allowed. you can go ahead and guess my list of uh, 10 games from last time. You can skip this part with timestamps if you don't want to Too hear Too Many it. Bones? Absolutely. Terraforming Mars? Absolutely. Seven Wonders? No. Interesting. If I could only keep 10 games? I mean, I like that game, but like... I, I'm trying to think of variety of experiences. For 12 years. Uh, yeah, but variety of experiences. I hear you. Um, okay. Uh, expansions. Um, hmm. Uh, Marvel United. No. It's too light. I love the game. I love it. But if I only keep 10 games, it's not making the cut. Variety of experiences? Yeah, and that's why I have Marvel Champions. <laughs> okay. Um, Zombicide? Nope. Interesting. I can only keep 10, so I kept the game that is basically Zombicide, but better for me. But better. Um, you don't even remember our top ten. You forgot it already. Oh, Cthulhu Death May Cthulhu Die. Death May Die. Okay. Cthulhu Death May Die. Okay. Cthulhu Death May Die. And again, keep in mind, so far <coughs> we have Too Many Bones, which is like $1,000 worth of content if you have all of it. Cthulhu Death May Die, a few hundred dollars worth of content. Marvel Champions is like, uh, the amount of stuff I have, maybe three, four hundred, maybe five hundred dollars worth of content. We have, uh, what is it, what's the other one you mentioned? You mentioned, um, you didn't mention the list. No, you didn't mention that. Oh, Terraforming Mars. Mm -hmm. About 150, 200 dollars worth of content. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't want to waste too much time. Sure. What's the rest of them? Uh, Root. Yeah. With all the expansions, the variety of the expansions. With all of the expansions. The variety of the expansions. Again, these are all expansions. So enough to be able to play it then. Exactly. <laughs> Everdell. Uh, we have Everdell. Everdell. Interesting. With all the expansions, a ton of ways to experience it. Sure, sure, sure. Solo sure. load as well. 
Sure, I, I thought about that, but I because I'm on this version yeah. of the list, I can't. I, the I, base game Everdell? That's not not. I, I've played base game Everdell digitally I, a lot now, and it, it to me, I'm feeling the same way about like two player Everdell that yeah. you feel about two player Azul. Nice. I'm like there. You Just can the, the more you start experiencing the deck, you start to see all the ways you can do. We it. had we knew the contest. I was gonna guess that one. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know how much enough yeah, it a was. Lot. There's a lot. We have uh, a uh, Gloomhaven. Okay, I was curious. Yep. I was curious yep. where that would land. I feel like that's still going to be on the list for you because the base box is a hundred scenarios. Spirit Island. Well, all of the expansions. Yep. I feel like that's not going to be still on the list. And then Codenames Duet. That is specifically Duet because it, you can play it teams and two player. Okay. Well, well, that's staying game. on the list probably. Yeah. And with that, from that, I'll say that currently, from the list that we have, from the previous list of ten, two and a half have remained. Two and a half. Two and a half. And they're not the ones you think. And we're not going to do... You can do, you can lock your guesses in, but I will not confirm until later. You want to lock your guesses in? Two and a half Okay, okay, okay. I'm, gonna, uh, he's, I'm not, I'm not going to confirm or deny, but I will say the list again. Now that you know two and a half, I will say the list again. Okay. Codenames do up. Uh, oh, oh, and then... Uh, sorry, I left one out. Inish. Inish. I'm confused Inish was about the half was, I, no, Well, that's... Uh, hold up. So again, the ten games are... Inish, Too Many Bones, Codenames Duet, Terraforming Mars, Spirit Island, Gloomhaven, Cthulhu Let Me Die, Marvel Champions, Arena of the Contest, Avidel, and Root. One of the games wasn't on the list. I don't know which one I messed up on. One of those games was not here. So two and a half of those yes, are, are still on the list. Are still on the list. I think Gloomhaven is subbed out for Frosthaven. Um, so that's the half, I'm assuming. Uh, I figured if I said them again, you might be able to guess them. <clears throat> so I'm going to assume that Gloomhaven is replaced by Frosthaven. Um, and the others, then, others I'm gonna, I'll, I'll confirm that one. That's basically the half. Yeah. Right at this uh, point. And then I think Arena the contest is staying. Um, and then maybe uh, Oof, Oof, Oof is not on the list. Oof, Arena the contest, Frost Haven, and out of the stuff you said, Marvel Champions. Even though. I think it's still your solo pick, maybe. And with that, let's go ahead and start the video. We'll this see. video, we're going to go through it. We're going to be going back and forth. These are ordered in terms of what we are most, least likely to keep to, most likely to keep. Like, if you only keep two, if you only keep three, if you only keep four, etc., etc. And with that, I'm going to start this off because one of my picks is a prototype that is not here yet. And because of that, I have 11 picks. So to make this so I can start and finish with me, we're going to go ahead and start with me. And my first pick is going to be Machina Arcana. Is that the one that's not here yet? That's number 11. That's oh, number, Because oh. My, the one I would keep is much higher. So number 11 okay. is Machina Arcana. Okay, okay. These are base games only. The goal here was to give me games that still give me a variety of content, still give me a variety of experiences, still give me enough reasons that I'm confident I would be able to dive into it for hours and hours and hours and hours. And Machina Arcana is one of my better dungeon crawlers. Uh, like I'll mention right now, Cthulhu Let Me Die, base game only. Not, not on, on the, the list. list. There's two, I, I think it's amazing, yeah. I think it's incredible, but there's not enough experiences in it for me to be one of the top ten if I could only have the base game. Throw in one or two expansions, it might be enough, but no expansions. Cthulhu Me Die does not make the cut. I do have a variety of other dungeon crawlers on here, and one of them is going to be Machina Arcana. I think the amount of experience you get from it is just... It's a dungeon crawler, got a ton uh, of equipment, yeah. got a ton of experience to it. I, I would happily <clears> have it as a game that I dove into again and again and again. It's behind one of the boxes. It's been one that I have consistently, every time I've come here, I knew that we just don't have the time for it, but it's ever. it's been one I've wanted to try every the time. The worst part is when we were playing, picking like the last thing to play today, I could have picked that one. Would it have finished in enough time? You don't need to finish it to enjoy it. Fair. That's the thing. Fair. And also the short tutorial, probably. Ah. Oh. Next time. Next time. After this. After this. <laughs> We got four videos after this. Not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm changing my shirt. I'm not changing shirts. It's gonna be the same shirt every time. That's my number one. What's your number one? My number one is the lightest game on there for me. Uh, I'm picking Scrabble just as a game to casually go ahead and enjoy with other people. Um, I love word games and you know base game. It's it's it, it's up to the imagination of the people playing in terms of the words that you can create. And you can play it with people of all different ages, and you can play it uh, uh, very, like, intensely with, like, small words on top of words and creating, you know, multiple combinations of words and stuff like that. So I have a lot of fun with it, and I have a lot of good memories playing Scrabble, and I couldn't... I thought that it would be too much of a stretch to cheat and pick a deck of cards, which would have been my number 10 it's, no, pick. No, no, it's not a cheat. It's not a cheat. If you want to pick that, pick a deck of cards. Well, it's just that, like, with a deck of cards, it's not really, like, one game. I understand. It's a bajillion games. I understand. 
But I literally said in the intro, granted I didn't say it before, <laughs> I said feel free to stack the game components. So if you're like, I pick spit, and then you just do other things with the game components, be my guest. <laughs> Gross. Fine. <laughs> I'm calling an audible mid-video. I'm picking deck of cards. Picture on the screen is not going to change. <laughs> I know, but Should I'm I just time uh, a deck of cards. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, time stamping in a deck of cards. <laughs> I'm going to take a deck of cards with me, because I love card games. I think it's fair. I think it's fair. I could play poker, I could play spades, I could play uh, nerds if other people bring cards, or I could just play nope. solitaire. No, no, no. Now you're thinking it's your box. No, I'm thinking outside the box. <laughs> what if you and I are on the same island with our same ten games? Oh, yeah, If fair. enough second, of us... Second. I didn't pick a deck of cards. <laughs> <laughs> but other people could. Other people could. I think Scrabble or a deck of cards. I guess fine. Which one's your eleven? Scrabble's my eleven. Scrabble's your eleven. Okay. And deck of cards is number ten. Ten. Great. Now we're yeah. both cheating. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. With that, I'm gonna go to my number uh, ten, which I am. Wait. I just... Oh yeah, my number ten. My number ten is not. I was about to say something for number nine. <laughs> it's a deck my of number cards. ten is not a deck of cards. <laughs> it does have cards in it, and that specifically is mind management. Ooh. Mind management is a delightful experience. Ooh. That the mental back and forth between a group of players. Also, a big thing I didn't really talk about: variety of player count. If I'm only mm. gonna have ten games, I want a variety of player count. Sure. Now I sure, did cut sure, out party sure. games. I have no party games on my list. Party games would have been like number fifteen. I, I'm not. I'm just not gonna have that many people on this island with me. We'll call it a day. We'll oh, by your by your own choice, right? You're like, I, you're like own choice. I don't want more than enough people to justify a party game. But my management will take you nicely up to five players and still have an excellent experience from there. In theory, you could even play a team base with multiple people on both sides if you really want to stretch it, but we're not going to do that. What we will say is my management is an incredible back and forth experience mm. of just tactical depth, uh, variety, not necessarily so much variety in other content, but the problem is the thing, the shift packages, will, you can just mix up the way you mix and match different abilities to constantly give you a mental puzzle. I think my management is the kind of it's game. sneaky because it's kind of got expansions, but they're baked into they're the, the core game. game. Yeah. yeah, baked into the core game does not count as expansions. Yeah, and, and so I think I've actually have some others in that, in that category. <laughs> I have at least one of that definitely has the same mental uh, jump. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's an incredible experience that I think I could give it fifty to a hundred plays and still not get remotely tired of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna have to because it's the only one of ten games I own. <laughs> What's your number ten? My or number nine. nine. nine yeah, yeah, yeah. I've 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 abided by the rules. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> my number nine is my main lighter cooperative pick. It's the Crew Mission Deep Sea, and I haven't picked. I haven't actually even played Mission Deep Sea. I've played the first one, and I own Mission Deep Sea. I haven't just haven't played that. It's because, a safe pick if you own the original. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I I've played the original. Plenty of times, and I just know that people are like, well, categorically, Mission Deep Sea is just a smidge better in some of the stuff that it adds in. And I love trick-taking games, and I love card games, and I like this as a cooperative puzzle. And it really does change the difficulty once you scale up the player count. So if you like want to play it kind of casually with like three people, or you want to be really mean to yourself and do five people, it is a very different type of the crew. Um, and because it's got such a long logbook of missions... Yep. You and could play it for a long time. The and it, it's replayable, yeah. too, because even if you redo the missions and the campaigns, the the tasks that you get make a difference. So uh, the crew, for me, is a pretty it is kind of like, in terms of what you were saying, a variety of gaming experiences and a variety of player counts, the crew was a sensible pick for me. Uh, for me, this is a good time to say that I do not have Conan's Duet in my original list. On this ah. Even though that does fall in the one category, like the one game which I picked based on base game only. Yeah. I was like, you know what? We don't need party games if I only have 10. <laughs> I love Codenames. I think Codenames is incredible. But I was weighing up the different experiences I had. I debated putting it as my number 11, and I was like, I think I would get tired of it. Like, thinking of it like practically, I mm -hmm. think I would eventually get tired of the same yeah. single party game. Sure, well, sure, sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? We'll find I mean, out if we're time. on an island with 10 games, we might eventually get tired of of all of them. No. <laughs> Some of these games, no. I mean, it you depends on how long we're... You only live so long, Devin. <laughs> You're like, I'll kill myself before. If I can't have coffee, I don't really need these to last that long anyway. <laughs> if I can't have coffee. My number nine is one that I am confident is going to be on your list. Confident, 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 and that's specifically because this is Oathsworn Into the Deep World. <sighs> Why would you think that I... Uh, this game is... Not the best. I can't even lie. Now, this I is ordered. This, this is ranked again in order of least to most for me. OS1 is still lower down. I think OS1, I love it. I love the experience. I think it's incredible. I think it's amazing. I think it does, does, does so well. But I don't know if this is the game. Like, for me, here's the thing. Here's the problem with OS1 to Deepwood and the relevance on this list. 
I'm never playing the story mode twice. Like, never. Mm. Like, I, maybe not never. It's going to be a long time this island. But, like, I, when I touch that story mode, when I go through those 20 games... Do you just mean one, doing, like, instant action mode? Correct. Yeah. When I go through those 20 games of the story mode, I go through the choice to choose an adventure, maybe I'll come back to the story mode, like, seven years later. It's going to take some time. I am not invested enough in story. Are you going to run out of coffee by then? Yeah, exactly. I'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> But I just, I'm not going to go to the story mode again. It's not the same experience. So I'm going to have to play it regular and then kind of go instant action mode or figure out how to best do it as quickly as possible because I'm just not invested enough in the story to continue to replay it. Mm. But the actual combat, for context, I've played the first scenario of Oats 1 like four or five times by now. Like that first, because I just kept in like play, I learned the game, then I taught somebody else, then I taught somebody else. I've played it four or five times, I think four times. And it's just, it is not worn out of me at all mm. playing the same scenario with different characters different compositions has been a thoroughly enjoyable experience even though i do think the tactical combat in gloomhaven is a better puzzle the the thing going on with the enemies and the the overall approach to the game and the different characters you jump around and try to figure out how to take down the that that rat in the first scenario it's a phenomenal experience and i believe it is highly variable even in just the combat alone the whole atmosphere of everything that is that one that i definitely felt confident that if we're doing base game only it makes the cut for me. Nice. Nice, yeah. Okay, my number eight yes. is a game that I've never played. You're, you're joking. No. <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> my number eight is Go. <laughs> Away, please. <laughs> but I'm like, dude, if I'm on an island or yeah. somewhere and I have a limited amount of games and I'm thinking depth of experience, yeah. I'm just going to take the time... To learn this game and master it. Because I, I, I grew up playing chess with my dad. For the record, by the way, I'm drawing lines in the sand and using pebbles. That's just an extra for me. <laughs> and I, like I, you know, I grew up playing chess with my dad. And I've kind of gotten to the point where chess, I know it's incredibly like deep and complex. But it doesn't interest me. Like the abstract games that you've taught me, like Czar and Yinch and stuff like that. And even Talk. I enjoy those more. I mean, even Talk. Talk's the best one. But that's we we played it so quickly. Yeah. We haven't actually played yes, the full that's good. The, the full experience together. Um but I, I think it was kind of after watching um uh Glass Knives yeah. uh that I was like I would love to just or Knives Out, Knives, knives out. out. I glass mixed onion. them. Glass, <laughs> glass onion, I was like, Knives glass Out. Knives. <laughs> that I need to correct so you, right. but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> so when I watched Knives Out, and you know, I was watching Christopher Plumer play it with, uh, um, oh gosh, I just forgot her name. Um, I just forgot her name. Uh, I don't know. Ah, uh, anyways, uh, she's awesome. Uh, and I just kind of realized I was like, I would love to learn that game, and I would love to like get to the point to where not only I learn it, but I start to like try to master it and grow. And I, it's it's just a kind of like visual spatial strategy game that I would like. Uh, and so yeah, I just it, I mean, if we I only have ten believe, games, I can't believe you picked a game you haven't played. <laughs> I've played Go, by the way, and I think Go is going to fall into one of two camps, depending yeah. on who you are. Yeah. Either it is a game that is incredibly tactically delightful and uh -huh. gives you so much mastery that you'll enjoy it and appreciate forever, uh -huh. or you'll play it seven times and think I'd rather play any of the other abstract games I've taught you. Sure, sure, sure. Like, I'd sure. rather play chess than Go. Easily, if you made me choose between chess and Go for Desert Island, I'm choosing chess. Okay. I think Go's great, but it's like, it gets like, I'm gonna get some hate in this. I just think it gets exhausting, the puzzle of, well, if I play this, you'll play this, and I'll create this little loop here. It's it's great. I just think, mm. I think, either on, whatever, it's good, but I wouldn't pick it. So you'll play with me? Yeah, I'll play with you. <laughs> Yeah, that over Scrabble. Well, I mean, if we combine our lists, we'll have 20 maybe, games. Oh, maybe oh, 17 20 games. games. <laughs> 17 games. My number eight is uh, one that also, I believe, is I'm fairly confident you on your You haven't played it? No, I'm fairly confident <laughs> on your list. Ironically, gives us, you know, an eighth of what we need to actually play through um, a go, which my number eight is Crokinole. Crokinole is a game that I think holds up tremendously well as far as, as far as the general... The ease of play of the game, the way you can just jump into teaching the game, playing the game, shooting those little flicking discs back and forth, it's one that, again, I know it's going to be on your list, it's one that is... You don't know that. Of course not. You don't love it more than me. Not at all. Crokinole is such a good experience. If you're looking for that experience that's like Go, that's like chess, that's like a deck of cards, meaning not to compare those at all, they're all very different, but in terms of <laughs> something that is not your traditional board game with a ton of rules, but rather something that is, I guess chess does have a ton of rules. <laughs> I take it back. Something that's not newer. Okay? Something that's not newer. Uh, Crokinole's an older game, and it's one that holds up, and it's just... It is so good as far as the experience you get. It's the kind of thing that we're up till 3 in the morning playing a game, and then someone has to go to bed, and it's not going to be me because I still want to sit there and play Crokinole. It is... If it's I can good, get that to it, it's good at 2. It's good at 2. It's good at 3. 
It's good at three. It's good at four. It's not really supposed to be good at three, but it's good at three. And it's good at four. I mean, you can practice by yourself. I I find it... No, so that's why I disagree with you. I I'm not it, saying that I actively try to do that. I mean, just, I will practice because I need to practice a bit, but like... No, it's I a don't, social experience for me. It, yeah, it's I not want people satisfying. there. Yeah. yeah. This is actually, in fact, from my list over here. In fact, let me just look through this over here. Mind management is one that you need You need it, but I guess, no, I need, uh, never mind. I was going to say I don't need people for a lot of these. I need people for a bunch of these. I have, like, kind of divided between, like, solo games that I uh, play You can play a mind management solo. You could, you could, with the app, and that's an expansion. It doesn't count. It's an expansion. Where do you think I'm charging my phone in this island? <laughs> Wait, we don't have power? No. So we only have a limited window of daylight to be able to play these if games? If we had power, I'd have coffee already. <laughs> <laughs> But then you'd be able to stay alive longer. That's fair. That's fair. Your turn. Your number. Your number six, I think. No, my number seven. <clears throat> I can't keep track. Really? My number seven. seven. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm Yeah, yeah. Is it my seven? It's your seven. My number seven is just like Go. Is just like it's chess. Not just like Go at all, is it? <laughs> it's Cloud Spire. I would finally have the time. Yeah. That I want to spend to return to what I think is my favorite world that. Chip Theory Games is built. So Tony um, Bones is not on your list. You don't know that. You said favorite. And I, to me, I think that this is both, you know, this hits solo, this hits cooperative, this hits competitive. It allows you to do a lot of different ways of playing the game. And also, if for mainly, this would probably be for me like the chunky, chunky, chunky solo game yeah. that I kind of like dive through and wade through on my own. And I would have the time to do so because I don't have any other games distracting me from the Cloud Spire rulebook. Cloud Spire is delightful. <laughs> I think it's a great choice. It would absolutely be somewhere on my list of top 20 games mm. to keep it to being to Desert Island. Cloud Spire is great. Cloud Spire is great. On your overflow list? My overflow list. My overflow list. <laughs> What's your number seven? My number seven is one that is a slightly controversial pick only because of how new it is and also because I don't know if it's going to get the same love that I have for it. We'll see. Interesting. Yeah, this is DEI, Divide at Nihara. That's so new. It's so it's new. It's so new. It would be higher if it wasn't so new. Oh, man. Just, I'm, I'm leaving it a little low on the list just because like, I'm like, hey. But so the question is, yeah. is when we were playing, I was having an absolute blast. It's amazing. Really, really enjoyed it. Really, really had a good time with it. But I'm curious about the base game versus expansion box we're thing. Gonna we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it, okay? So basically, Divide at Impera is an area control game from Ludus Magnus Studios. The general idea of it is purely, it's purely focused on area control. There's guys in the map. There's a little bit of killing. But most of the time, it's not about killing. It's about moving around, gathering resources, trying to trade in those resources to build up your point engine as much as possible, gathering action cards that will both improve the actions you take and be worth points at the end of the game. And it's just a good general area control game. Now, for me, as far as the base game, there's four boxes worth of expansions that I have for it, and I haven't played with any of it yet. But the thing about the Divide at Impera, compared to many area control games, first of all, I do know area control games, my favorite ones, some of which are on this list, are ones that don't need expansions to shine. Mm. They have expansions, they don't need expansions to shine. Uh, there's another one that almost made the list. In fact, Rurik, I would say Rurik Don of Kiev almost made the cut here. That one I find the same. I know another one on your list. We'll then. talk about it later. But anyways, Rurik Don of Kiev does have expansions. The expansion is better, but it doesn't need the expansion to shine. It's an incredible game. And Divided Impera, one of the things I love about it, the reason mm. I would actually debate putting it higher on this list, even above others that I might like more, mm -hmm. is because the map structure in Divide and Impera is a bunch of map tiles that drastically shift up the play experience. Mm. I would say the other two area control games I have on this list, two other area control games, they are both a... Two others. One of them has a static map, and the other one has tiles, but it doesn't drastically shift up the experience I'm having. And if you've put this on the list, then I think Rurik's Div out. Divide and Impera to me, the, the, the every time I play it, and I've played it like four times in just this week, this is not like Cult of the I mean, it's Cult of the New, but it's not Cult of the New without like with two plays. This is four plays. I played it before in the, when they had the, the, the campaign. I played it four times this week. I expect to play it a ton more. It plays great at two, three, and four players. It gives you a, a solid experience. It gives you a puzzle that is constantly different. This is all base game only. It gives you just cards and abilities and, and, and action tokens, and all of them let you approach the game differently, and the map is different every time you play at least it doesn't have to be you can play with the same base, base map again and again have a puzzle but the way you mix the map forces you to re-examine the way you approach the same engine every single time this would be higher on the list because of the variety but I am cautious of, of putting something too much higher when I, 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 I it's kind of new I know what the next two ones are excellent we'll talk about it later what's your number six my number six is Dwellings of Eldervale so I 
adore this game, and I think, I, I don't know, so right now, you know, I mean, right now the buzz is about Andromeda's Edge, it's sure. the one that's on GameFound, it's doing really well, it's crossed a million dollars, and it's Luke Lurie's return. When this video's gone up, it may, it may be, the campaign might be, campaign might be over. You can still lay pledge, but. Oh. Yeah, I'm just saying, you're saying oh. it's on GameFound, I'm saying it was on GameFound. Oh, I mean, just like, it's, it's, it's in the yeah, recent, yeah. you know, conversation, even sure. if the campaign isn't live. So is, is what I said still valid? Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Can I keep talking now? Yeah. Okay. Today's also Saturday. But probably not your today. Our today. <laughs> <laughs> the level of unnecessary information between the two of us. Well, I wanted to throw that in, because why not? But yes. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. So Dwellings of Elderville, which is not Andromeda's Edge, which may not be live by the time this is over. Um... I really, really By like it. By the time it. this video goes up, actually, the new hotness <laughs> is not Dwellings or Andromedas, it's Skyrise Surprise. What is that? It's the third one from Luke Lowe, yeah? <laughs> Skyrise Surprise. <laughs> Couldn't think of a better name off the spot. <laughs> but that actually sounds like what someone would name a board game. So I thought you it doesn't just, sound like a good one. I thought one. you were just talking about another game. It doesn't game. sound like a good one. Anyways. Anyways, Dwellings of Eldervale. I have played it solo, and I really enjoy it. It has a fantastic... It solo. It's got a fantastic solo mode. Um, you go up against the, the ghosts of Eldervale, and then it is such a fun puzzle. I like the adventure tableau. I like the worker placement. I like, uh, I really, really like Luke Laurie's solution for worker placement games where the recall action is actually an active turn mm -hmm. to where you never really have a boring turn. You know, like Lords of Waterdeep, everybody finishes putting yeah. their people out. You reset. Dune Imperium, everybody put their pieces out. You reset. All that kind of stuff, um actually has a mechanical implementation in Dwellings of Elder River, which I think is really smart. The production's insane. It's got eight factions, but really it's got 16 factions because every board is double-sided. So it's just, it's just got so much con to it. It's one of my favorite games. And uh, yeah, Dwellings of Elder Vale, easy pick for me. Great choice. That was number six or five? That was my number six. My number six then, in that case. I don't think you... I don't track at all. Yeah, you're not tracking. No, me. no. I think if I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking I'd put 11 on, which just throwing me off. <laughs> To that end, my number six is the half we talked about earlier. This is Frosthaven. And mm. Frosthaven has so much content that it's hard to ignore this if you're only picking base games. This is not a traditional base game, not by a long shot, with 130 scenarios of content. It's replaced Gloomhaven on the list, because when the last time I did this list, we didn't have Frosthaven, so Frosthaven wasn't on this list. Not that this stopped me later on in the video. But that said, uh, Gloomhaven, uh, not Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, Frosthaven, it's 130 scenarios. It's got incredible experience. It's higher than Oath Sworn because I, but in a combination of two reasons. One is I think I like the combat better, and two is even though I like many things about Oath Sworn better, and two is it has 130 scenarios. Mm. That box is insane. It's just it's just loaded with so many ways to and continue to experience the game. And if you're in your board of it, come back five years later after you played through those other games, you'll continue to have fun. It will take you five years to play it the first time. You can try all the characters, <laughs> try all the experiences. It's just so much content in that game that it has to be on this list <clears> if you enjoy the game. And if you could only pick 10 or 11 base games to play. <laughs> That's a smart pick. It's a smart pick. That's I, number five. Uh, my number five is Star Wars Rebellion. So I wanted a chunky two-player extravaganza. I am waiting to see if Dune Warfare Arrakis is going to sneak up there. Um, but right now, Star Wars Rebellion is just su is too good of an experience for me to not have it on the list. Uh, I love the asymmetric play. I love the fact of choosing your missions and then having to allocate your leaders to it. I like the uh, tension that you feel as the rebels when you're like, oh my gosh, I just told they can't find my base. Or if they do, I need to be ready so I can redeploy the base to somewhere else. Or if you're the Empire, you need to be like, you know, like I have a lot of troops, but there's also a lot of planets. So I have to spread out my troops on the planet so that I can find it. And so even though each of you feels like you're going up against kind of like overwhelming odds or unlikely victory um you do have certain levels of strength and comfort that you feel uh so just the, the tension at the table is really really palpable and i love the experience and it's you know i, I don't really have anything on here besides this that is a two-player like head-to-head -head, uh you know just fight to the to the death and so this is it just it's not going to be beat by anything else for me the only thing i have on this that falls in the category of two-player head-to-head is probably mind management yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not Probably to say that some of the but... area control games I have, you definitely could do two-player, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they thrive. Even DEI, I think from the area control games I put on this list, DEI is probably the best one of two players. But I think that it is, it's, yeah, still my management is going to be the one that's most, most optimal. Sure, sure, sure. That said, my number five. Mm. We're up to five now, right? We are up to five. 
<laughs> is Blood Rage. This is going to be another one of the area control games. And again, higher than DEI for now. Keep in mind, DEI is still fresh and new, and Blood Rage is one that I have, I don't know, 40 plays in my belt from having played this over the past uh, seven years. They're, they're there. They're there. All 40 belt. of them. Yeah. Blood Rage is a fantastic experience, and it continues to hold up. It is one that has gone down a little bit for me over time, just due to how many times I've played it and how much times I've approached that puzzle. But it's one in which you are you're constantly just... You're fighting to the death in an area control game of just attacking each other, trying to draft cards and powers and abilities in a way that will give you, again, a different puzzle every single time. To me, powers and abilities are not essential in a game, but they almost are essential in a game which has to hold up for the next forever, because they're my only 10 games, because it enhances the variety of the experience and the variety of the way you approach the puzzle. Every time I've approached Blood Rage, I try different combinations of, I'm going to pair up this with that and this with that, and you took that from me, so I have to re-examine my order, and now the board looks like this. It is a different puzzle every time. It's a beautiful game that is just amazing. I need to play it. After, not after this. There's only two of us. <laughs> we but we time. could play it on Board Game Arena. It's on Board Game Arena now. D do you like the implementation there I enough? I will find out for you. I'll let you know. Okay. Then you know, play. actually, Camp Co-op, the, they were like, we'll play it on there. So they're down to do, um, do like multiplayer do on it. Board Game Arena. I'll do it. Let's do it. I'll have no problem adding Blood Rage to <clears throat> I should add Blood Rage to my 12 by 12 challenge. Mm. I would do that. I would do that. That's a good game. I need to make that list. I ha and I heard the Steam version of it isn't as great. Like sometimes, the, sometimes enhanced visual effects so, can add to the experience. Yeah. Sometimes not. Yeah. So, so Gloomhaven is one that for me, yeah, I really like yeah. how the experience is enhanced by the digital version of the game. But uh, I actually got the uh, Steam, Steam version of Blood Rage for free to yeah. to review, and it was buggy as uh, all get out. I'm not the referring first to the bugginess. Around. I'm referring to just <clears> the uh, just the fact that the the more digital waviness kind of obstructs from how obvious. Oh, it is. was unplayable when it when it first came out. I haven't tried it yet. We'll try that out. Board game arena, though. Board, I should. I we should do this. We Let's should. Talk. Let's talk. Max also should. finished. Max also finished game of Blood Rage. Let's, Let's do talk. This. Throw a key on the mix. He loves it. It's Let's his favorite talk. game. Let's do this. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. You're number four. <laughs> My number four is Oathsworn into the deep woods. I cannot believe this is on your list. Yeah, you're surprised. So surprised. I actually did not put Gloomhaven Wait or Frosthaven on my list. I am more impressed by the fact that this is lower than the other one I'm expecting to see. Hmm. Interesting. It's the other one on the list. Gloomhaven or Frosthaven? Crokinole. Let's no, so we'll talk later. We'll find out later. We'll what? talk later. We'll talk later. So this for me is... Uh, I don't need Gloomhaven or Frosthaven because I don't want the physical copies of those. I prefer playing them digitally. I don't need the physical copies of these. And also, Oathsworn to me is more versatile if I'm playing with other people. If I'm playing a solo campaign and I'm 10, you know, 10 stories deep or 10 encounters deep out of 21 or something like that, if I'm running four characters, if I'm running two characters and two companions, you know, if someone wants to come and join me, I can turn my solo campaign very quickly into... Um, another campaign and they can hop on and they can control a companion or I could turn it into a full character for them or they can just take a character from me. Um, I like the idea of being on a desert island and just li listening to the raspy voice of James Cosmo for the rest of my days. Um, it's not an expansion because it doesn't add anything. I'll it's an, it's an enhancement. It's that. not an expansion. It came with the base game. Is the important yes. Thing. It's going to so, come later. Uh, you know, I, and, and I don't mind the idea because it's got 12 full characters and you're only ever fielding four at a time. And more often if you're playing a solo, you're fielding like two major and yeah. two minor. <clears throat> yeah. So like if, you know, if you're using them as a companion, then they're not even the same as what yep. they would be as a full character. It, usually so, using them as a companion kind of is like, I want, I want to play as a full character, Yeah, too, yeah, it, it excites you enough that you want yeah. to play the full character. And so I just think it's so versatile as a game. And I know that, like, the card play in Gloomhaven is incredibly satisfying. Yep. It's a very, very fun puzzle. But holistically, Oathsworn is a no-brainer for me as the choice of the boss battle or story game that We've I want. We've done this. There's a full um, Oathsworn versus Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven video. You can check we, it out on the channel. Ha we have talked about this. So for me, this is a solo play, a cooperative play, a campaign game play, and like my main kind of like storyboard game. Also, in your case, it's eye candy when you stop playing games. Oh, dude, those minis. Oh my goodness. My Although goodness. if I'm on an island, maybe I'll eventually learn to paint too. <laughs> Not learn. I know how to paint. Take the time to paint. Take the time to paint. Oh, Sworn's my number four. My number four is the last area control game. Uh, mostly, yeah, is last area Inish? control game. It is Inish. I knew it. Inish is one that is higher than Blood Rage, it is higher than, than, than DEI, and it's one that, again, with all these games, who knows what's going to happen 50 plays later. But Inish, it, it continues to hold up, and the more important thing is, Inish is a game that I've played, again, I don't know how many times I've played it, 30, 40, 50 times, I've played it a lot over the years, but it's one that 
consistently when we play it, I'll have a conversation, I'll have a game where I'm like, it's never happened that way before. Mm -hmm. uh, so my last few plays of Inish, we had a game, a five play game of Inish that ended in the first round, which would mean something if you played Inish. Uh, we had a game, I played a game of Inish with Meg where no tiles were revealed, meaning it was just the three starting tiles and that's it. Which again, would mean something to you, but it doesn't because you haven't played the game. That is crazy. But these are like things that consistently when we like one of my my game groups common refrain my game groups includes a, a, a Kiva AP one of my game groups common refrains is that Inish is a game that whenever we play it we're like it's never happened like this before mm. and that's something that continues to happen 30 40 plays in I don't know how it continues to happen but there's always a way the game played out that we're like it's just crazy it's just crazy and it's just such a good tactical experience mm. the depth again it has an expansion don't need it the expansion actually is one of the weaker expansions I've actually seen I like the extra cards it adds but past that don't really feel the need for most of the stuff it adds mm. but it's such a good game Inish absolutely by the way this is the first of in combination with the half from Gloomhaven this is one of the other ones that's from my original list oh yeah oh Inish is from my original list because mm. it's so freaking good I got it wrong arena the contest Yes, you did get it wrong. Although I did debate Arena of the Contest. You did? Okay, not cool. that, not It's not a low one. This is obviously... I did debate it. I debated <laughs> Arena of the Contest, just the base. I strongly debated. I did. Uh, it has enough content that I'd consider that. All right. Game my number, number three. three. My number three is Dune Imperium. Not surprised in the slightest. Dune Imperium. I don't need Rise of X. I don't need Immortality. I like both of them, and I think they both add nice things to this game. But this is such... A fun game. And if I'm not bringing Twilight Imperium with me, I am sure as hell bringing Dune Imperium. And I don't even need to defend this. It is such a good worker good placement game. deck builder. Such, such a, good, a game. good game. And it's, to me, like, out of all the games that I've got, Cloudspire, a long game. Long game. Uh, mission Crew, uh, the Crew Mission Deep Sea, short game. Uh, Star Wars Rebellion, really long two-player game. This is, like, Dune Imperium is my, like, three to four player 90 minute sweet spot game on my yeah. list. There's nothing else on that list that really hits that. Dwellings is a little bit longer. Um, so I was like, I kind of want something that's a 75 to 90 minute, like, heartthrob. Yeah, for me, anything that fell into the Euro category, for the most part, with one exception, which we're actually about to talk about for my next one, um, no, two from now, I only had one game that fell into the Euro category for me. Most of the time when it comes into something that's more Euro-based, I find that I don't have the confidence that it'll hold mm. up. Especially base game only, I don't have the confidence it'll hold up as long. Mm -hmm. uh, Lost Dunes of Arnak is a great example. I think Lost Dunes of Arnak, that's to me, is my Dune Imperium in terms of where I prefer it. Yeah. And I, with the expansions, I'd be more likely to think about it, but the base game only, I just am not willing to pick Lost Dunes of Arnak. I think 30, 40 plays in, I've solved mm. the puzzle. A lot of them come down to optimization. And there's enough stuff. I mean, I, I would say, actually, here's a fun one. Actually, this is a fun one for you. I think if I had to pick between Dune Imperium or Lost Dunes of Arnak in a Desert Island game, I would pick Dune Imperium. Why? Because the conflict introduces more variability. Sure. I think in general, interaction... If you're talking about just a base game? Yeah. I think interaction often introduces more variability to an experience than a more, by doing my own thing, Europe. Mm. So are you saying that this hypothetical situation is where you realize you're wrong and Dune Imperium is better? If you add the expansion... I understand what you're saying. If you no, I get it. I get it. For get sure. It. Yeah, I mean, Dune base Imperium is alone. more like Go and Chess. But I and, really and... needed I really needed the expansion for Dune Imperium. That's why I'm still on the fence. Mm. But if you put Rise of Ix in and you're talking about Desert Island scenario, it, it takes the cake over our neck. Rise of Ix really elevated Dune for me. But if you do Rise of X, then you would have to do Leaders for Arnak. Even so. Even then. Even then. Even then. Even then. Oh, once, oh, 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 oh. once you do both, once you introduce expansions, but you make it a Desert Island scenario where I want that variability. Need it in writing, please? Just... If you give me, I have a knife, does that work? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he could just see, I love how you could have gone from pen and you're like, oh, I'll use my knife. It's a good choice. It's a good choice. <laughs> nice. That's my number three. My number three is the one I'm cheating on. My number three is the game that has not yet arrived, but it definitely falls in the category of even base game only, I am willing to say I want this game. Interesting. Which one do you think? You know there's only a handful of games in my upcoming games that I'm like, I love this thing beyond belief. And there's two that you might think of, and one of them you'd be wrong about. Upcoming games. Games arriving. They're not here yet. I've backed them. They're coming. There's two that you might think of, and only one is actually making this list. My brain's failing me. The one you're not thinking of is The Witcher. But it's not The Witcher. Oh. But there's a different one. There's I've a different very one. Very excited about for a very long time. And it's coming this year. Oh! Behind that box. Primal! Primal. Primal is the one that is definitely. I would not have I would not have picked Primal except for the last time I was here with you and Meg and you like 
you re-talked about it. And I was I'm like, so, I guess okay. I don't remember him liking so, it so much. First of all, this is already a little cheat over Marvel Champions because Primal has the gameplay style of Marvel Champions, at least to me. I don't know if everyone shares that opinion. And it has a whole lot more content than the base box. Marvel Champions base box, not enough for the game, not in the slightest. Mm. But Primal gives me that card play decision. And it gives me a whole box full of monsters. And yes, the, expansion, the Kickstarter had a bunch of expansions. I'll leave the expansions behind. I don't care. Just give me the base game of Primal with a bunch of monsters, a bunch of campaigns, a ton of card play, a bunch of characters to play as. It's the kind of crunchy experience that I, I love. And the amount of content, and even just the base game box, makes it so that I have my boss battler. I mean, this one's also a boss battler. But I have two boss battlers now. And this one gives me a very different puzzle. It's a more of a Yuri style boss puzzle. That combat experience. I mean, I, I am very excited for you to play primal mm -hmm. i want to see if it beats those one for you it's not going to be those one for you it's not going to be those one probably uh, like the oh so, so i like story stories experience. i like the stories oh one got to get story right oh one really does get story right yeah but primal is incredible it's i amazing. mean primal to me i probably would like it to the point to where it's different enough combat wise that i don't think it would like be the so same cool. as Oathsworn. It's very different than Oathsworn. Very yeah. Different. It's just a boss battle. So to me, they could operate in the same space. And I win. But you can yeah. still say one's better than the other. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm saying you still sure. could do that. Sure. And for me, Primal's sure. better than Oathsworn. Sure. At least, at least based on my experience with the prototype. Sure. We'll see when the final game shows up. But yeah, sure. Primal will be my number three if I talk about Desert Island games with no expansions. Sure. You're number two. <laughs> Crokeable. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> What, what, what? I, was, I said sure like 14 times. What do you mean sure to what? <laughs> just, what? Just you'll have to watch your own video. Um, so, Crokinole is my number two. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, yeah, I'm, it doesn't bother me that it beats Oathsworn and Dune Imperium and stuff like that. Like, is this higher in your top ten as well? Uh, the I think Crokinole top... was my number two. Was it? Yeah, because my number, number one, one was Forbidden Stars. Which, frankly... Well, spoilers, <laughs> I hadn't finished my list. Yeah, Forbidden Stars didn't make my list because um, it would just be, uh, it, it, to me, I, it is like one of my favorite games ever, but I think that I would get tired of just the base box over time. Yeah, um, I, I respect that. There's a bunch and, here. and so I had to change things up. And, but Crokinole, I won't. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna my get tired of Crokinole. My number one, my number two, both did not like this list. Yeah. 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 So no, Crokinole, I just I would not get tired of. I would not get tired of it. It's just too fun. It's too fun. For me? You always say you keep going? Sure. Yeah. You do that again. <laughs> you do that again. My number two. My number two is the only Euro game on this list. Uh, mostly Euro game on this list. And it's one that the base game does come with a bunch of modules and stuff in the box. Mm. And it's, a, it's one that goes to the point that if you have enough room in your luggage, you're welcome to take my copy home with you. Because that is Vindication. I would not have thought about this. If on we're your talking list. of a top ten Desert Island game, so again, I want the how much? Experience. So it's just so this is what you're referring to when you're talking about mind management and the shifts out and having a bunch of modules in yes. the game. I well now I want to play this more because I really liked it the first time and I didn't realize how much is apparently game. inside the base There's game. There's a lot inside the base game. This expansion is galore and like, I want the expansions. I think they will add the expansions in different ways but I've played mostly the base game mm -hmm. and even then I have occasionally dabbled in some of the modules. Mm. There's so much variety to the experience of Vindication that like, this is my Euro pick. <coughs> I just breathed incorrectly. <laughs> you breathed incorrectly? <laughs> apparently. Okay, you don't need 10 games. You probably need like one and a half mm. last. Um... <coughs> Sure. Vindication, if I'm looking for a Euro experience and I'm looking for the ver variability that keeps it interesting, that makes me think that the puzzle will never really expire, Vindication hits that notch. It is, I think, was it in my top 10 this year? Did it bump up to 11? I think it was 11 or 12 or it, something. It may have bumped to my 11 or 12 in my top 10, but like, in a Desert Island experience, this <clears> definitely <throat> is, is hitting that. It is oh. such a good game. Is this your Dune Imperium? Probably, yeah. probably. It, it, no, but it's still it's still a little bit more Yuri. It's a little less conflict. There's no conflict. In the no, game. but I just mean like that kind of like weight of yes. game. Yes. And yes. player countish. This is my Dune Imperium on the list. I, I like Arnak <clears throat> better than Vindication, but Vindication gives me more variety and more certainty that it would hold up if I'm only gonna have mm. ten or eleven <sighs> games. Did you forget a game? Unsettled. I, base game only. I don't count it. Sure. And to me, base game me, me is two, two missions. Two, mi it's two, two planets. Missions. It's only two planets. That's the problem. Unsettled was on my list. So technically that's six missions, but... Yeah, I know, um, but it's not... It's, I would it's not. still just two boxes. Unsettled was on my... Would it's, have been it's on too my... modular. If yeah. they, if all of that had been in a single, a thing? single box, yes. then... If you yeah. were counting the that pledge, that was would have been on my list with Vindication. Not Unsettled. Yeah, in fact, I considered it when I was thinking of my number 11. I was like, I need, I need more than two yeah. boxes. 
Yeah, I, d d two planet boxes would yeah. eventually w w wear this, out. This, to me, the planet boxes, to me, are similar to um, uh, Cthulhu Death May Die. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah. enough experience to justify the price of entry. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not enough to be a desert mm. island game. Sure, sure, that's fair. Uh, good job, Oneb. You got you got us competing for you. Yeah. Um, Vindication, I just, I just want to play more now. You should play. I just want to play more now. We should play with the Kiwi. He likes it, too. Oh, my gosh. Can uh, you just visit more? I... Could you, like, move here? That would require... A lot of things. Okay, we'll talk about it later. You, no, it's, it's not me. Okay, you used to I talk know. to Amber. Okay, we'll talk to Amber. We'll talk to Amber. <laughs> you talk to Amber. I'll that's, give her a shout. That's a lot of stuff. A shirt? A shout. Oh. A shout. I'll give her a shirt. I was like, yeah, Amber, gonna if convince you move her. here, I'll give you a shirt. I don't know how she could turn that down. My number one game yes. is a rule breaker. There's no rules here. And I broke them. <laughs> you, you put a deck of cards in those things. I don't care what you do for number one. <laughs> my number one is Alien, the role-playing game. Because this is the game out of all of these that Amber would play with me the most. And it's the mo it's it's got absolutely the most content in it. All I need is a core rule book and it's imagination and storytelling. I want to play this game. You keep uh, talking about it. Uh, I mean, so like for RPG, me, not I, I, I argued about doing Dungeons and Dragons or this. And ultimately I picked this because I like sci-fi settings more than fantasy settings. And so this did it for me. And because, you know, it's got cinematic scenarios that you could do. It's got uh, campaign scenarios that you could do. So you could do full stories. You could do small stretches. And really it's the versatility of it is down to the people playing rather than the, the game itself. Like the the mechanics or the structure of what they give you with the role-playing game means that it can go in infinite directions. And I just think that that's such a... Like, I, I would love to role-play. scrap play. the whole one-wing conversation and <clears> just <throat> get a fourth person and just you, me, and Meg doing Alien RPG. And okay, you person. have to convince Meg because she's this isn't the one she wanted I'll to do. I'll convince her. Okay. We need a fourth person, though. I uh, Sure. I'm just not enthralled at all about like, the one-wing. Sure. That, this is e this this is easier for me to get off the ground because I've already done a cinematic scenario of it twice over. Okay, we need do we need a third ideally. I mean, it would be better to have three. Okay, okay I'll find someone. I'll find someone. Yeah, we're gonna do this. I sure. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm stoked to do that. Sounds I'm, great. I'm make it happen. I'm gonna take. Yeah, this is my number one thing. Okay. I would, role playing in general, but I'm gonna pick. Did you Alien. ask Chris George yet? Did I ask Chris George? He's busy. He's like he like you know does acting. He said he's busy to you, right? And. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. We'll try to see what we can do. Yeah, Alien the role-playing game. Okay. What is your number one? My number one is... Um, I forgot. There, I remembered it. I remembered it. My number one is the only other one that was on my other list. The mm. last one standing. And it's one that holds up even just the base game, although I am being specific about the base game I'm picking here. And that's going to be Too Many Bones, not Undertow, but the original base game. Really? I think Even with characters... all of that divorced content that you have to take yep. away, yep. this is still good? Because here's the thing with Too Many Bones. Because people often ask me what's my favorite character, as if I've played most of the characters I have. Mm -hmm. I think I've only played maybe five characters from the entire Too Many Bones universe. Yeah. I have them all, but I don't feel the need to dive into them because I keep... When I pull Too Many Bones, I'm like, I could learn a new character, or I could play these four characters that I already love. Let's just do that because it's less rules, and I still haven't explored them all. Yeah. And so... Or five characters. I, I think... I can't remember. I've played both Undercore characters. I've played Tantrum. Um, I've played... Have I don't remember who So you played I, Tantrum I played, with the I played hatchet. Tantrum for sure. Have I, you played Picket? I don't have you remember. Played I'd have to look Boomer. I'd have to look. Boomer, I played. I played Boomer. I have to let Pickle look have the last one. Played Pickles or no? I don't remember. Either way, either way, I've played the character. I played a bunch of characters. I've not played that many. Pickles. I don't think <laughs> his name is Pickles. I don't know. I don't know his name. But I've played a bunch of the characters, but not that many. And I've gone through. I still I, patches. I, I, Patch. I don't remember. I don't remember. But the and and the scenario wise, scenario wise, I still haven't played a ton of scenarios. Yeah. Even the amount of amount of bosses you have in Undertow. I consistently will take the shorter ones, so I'll consistently replay a bunch of the scenarios, and it mm. doesn't get old for me. Mm. The amount of content I've actually dove into in Too Many Bones is not enough, not more than the core set. It's not. I have it all because I mm. want to, and I love the universe, but the core set would be completely fine, and I still would have an absolute ton of gameplay out of so this. So that's your Cloud Spire. So, yeah, it's absolutely my Cloud Spire. Yeah. Like, I'd certainly have more content than I got a post one. Certainly. Yeah. For me, as far as I'm concerned, would I get less than Blue <clears throat> Haven? Sure, absolutely. Less than, I don't know, I have to go through my list. But I, I, it's... It is interesting how just this particular scenario mm -hmm. and the caveat of base game has made us really, like, Examine. reorder. Yeah. Like, I would have never have thought of Vindication jumping to your two. Yeah. And I would not have thought of this being above Gloomhaven or something like that. That's so good. These are experiences so, are so Or Frosthaven. Good. 
Yeah, and, and Too Many Bones is one of my favorite games of all time, especially when you're looking at it from a stance of only that content. Yeah. It is just so... And it, the, sure. it's rewarding. It's a rewarding game. That's my number. That's my number one. My number sure. one is Too Many Bones. Nice. You've played it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you play it more. Yeah. It's so good. I need to play all of Chip 3's titles more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need to play all of these games more. Anyways, that has been our top 10 Desert Island games. These are Desert Island games. Oh, if you can only keep 10 or 11 games, whatever it is. We're cheating a little bit. It's fine. He's got a deck of cards <laughs> and an RPG. I've got a game. I mean, I know. I took off Scrabble and replaced it with a deck of cards because that's what I really wanted. But I thought you would be more upset about a deck of cards than you would about Alien, the role-playing game. Gonna, it is going to be super awkward when I get that uh, email from Primal. Can you confirm your shipping address? I'm like, um, it's an island somewhere. <laughs> We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, no, not enough people will be there to allow for a party game. <laughs> These are the games. So your kids aren't going to be on the island. I didn't bring any kids' games. Yeah, I'll teach them how to play Gloomhaven. Frosthaven. I'll Frost teach Haven. them how to play Frosthaven. They like Go. Actually, they like Go. Then I like Go. Crokinole. They like Crokinole. With how long Crokinole. it took us to play Yinch with Rafi on your lap, do oh you really gosh. want to go into a deep Frosthaven scenario? They'll play with the miniatures on half these games. <laughs> The miniatures, they like that. So you don't, you're not teaching them the game, you're just distracting them with miniatures. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a parent on a desert <laughs> island. <laughs> this has been our list. Let us know down below at least one. Let us know one game. Like what's If you could think of the <clears throat> singular game, if you could only keep a single game and nothing else, or do a full top ten in the comments down below. Either one works sure. for us. Uh, but yeah, I'm Alex Rackley from Board Game Co. I'm Devin. And have a good one. See ya.